Coffee Nerds, I'm Brody, and today I'm going to show you how you can make one of the world's most expensive drinks in the comfort of your own home. That's right, cat poop coffee. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, what if I don't have a cat? Um, is it really worth the time that I'm going to put into it? Or maybe you're just thinking, what is cat poop coffee? Well, I'm going to explain all of those in just a minute, but first, we have to go back in time a few days. So, I was asked to do some cat sitting for a few friends of mine for about two weeks and I thought what a better time to try out this experiment than right now. So I've got some green beans here, now I just want to see how Simba takes them. Come on, come on, here. Looks like he likes them. Eat up, eat up. So that was three days ago. Why don't we go check on the progress? Hey Simba, what were you doing in there? I think we got the goods here. So it looks like the first part of our experiment here was a success. Oh wow, yeah, those smell super fresh. Thank you Simba. Let's brew it up for the ultimate test. He likes it. Well, here we have it. Cat poop coffee. I really hope this went out. The ultimate test. <laughs> okay, alright. I know you're skeptical. And you should be. You know that I didn't really feed green beans to my friend's cat. That would be cruel. And you know that even if I did, he wouldn't have pooped them out already roasted and ready to go. So there's, there's two flaws to my grand plan, but I'm not in the business of making cat poop coffee, so I think I'm in the clear. It is good to be skeptical about where your coffee's coming from and all the process that it goes through before you drink it. And I think that's the whole point. That being said, I am going to explain to you, um, probably for some of you who are wondering, what is cat poop coffee? I've never heard of it. Others might have heard of it, but they didn't really understand uh, what the whole process was. Is it really a cat? Does it actually poop it out? The fact is, um, right here, I actually just have a regular coffee, uh, roasted here in Toronto. <laughs> mm. Very, very tasty. I think it's like a Guatemalan. Basically, there's different versions of what we would define as cat poop coffee. In Indonesia, it's commonly known as Kopi Luwak. It is one of the most expensive coffees that you can buy out there. I've seen a few places sell them here in Toronto. Um, in Central America, South America, there's a Kuwati. It's called Kuwati. It's like this little, I don't know if it's like a rodent, but it's just like a marsupial, let's say. And it eats the, the coffee cherries, poops them out. Uh, the Luwak in Indonesia poops them out. And then uh, I remember the first time I ever heard about this was years and years ago when I was back in Vietnam. And they said it was a cat, but I think it's just called a civet. And so basically they get these animals to eat the cherries or there's two different versions of it. There is the version where they've gone out and collected the cherries in the poop that the animals have pooped out after eating the cherries in the wild. That's one thing. Um, another thing is there's some practices where they're actually keeping these animals and force feeding them to eat these cherries or maybe you know there's a more humane way to do it but anytime that an animal is caged for our pleasure it, it makes you think a little bit that being said when I'm drinking this coffee who who's to say how am I supposed to tell that this has actually gone through the process of being digested by an animal I wouldn't necessarily be able to know. I might be able to guess the process, whether it's a washed or a natural process, maybe even a honey, maybe even a carbonic maceration. We'll get to that in another video. But I think that's that's the question, you know? So where where is this coffee coming from? What is the process that it's going through? And is it just? Is it, are we, should we be doing this? 
And so that is the whole explanation of cat poop coffee. It does have its pros and cons. We don't actually know if sending it through an animal does anything to the quality of the coffee. My theory, and I think other people might agree, is that the animal actually knows which cherries or which beans are the best. They might not have defects, they might be at their prime ripeness, and so of course the, the beans that you get through that animal are going to be the best beans. That could be a big part of it. But at the end of the day, I'm not one to spend 75 times more on coffee than it needs to be. I'd rather that money go to the producers who are putting in a lot of the hard work to get a really good cup of coffee in your cup. And so I'd like to hear your feedback. If you've ever tried Kopi Luwak or anything similar to that, something that's been passed through an animal, I'm, I'm interested. I, I think I tried it once. Um, it was actually the Kuwati from Peru and it was not bad. It was interesting, but I wouldn't, if I drank that on my own, I wouldn't necessarily be able to say, oh, that's from a Kuwati. But if you have drank it, definitely leave some of those stories down in the comments. I want to check it out. And if you're not subscribed yet, why don't you do that now? Click subscribe. I have a few trips coming up that I'd really like to share with you. Uh, some to China, some to India, and we'll see where else we can kind of squeeze in in between. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of cat poop coffee at home. Don't try it yourself. There's a lot of other great coffee out there, but I will see you on the other side.